make big change via small experiments. Don't tell the boss you got the best idea ever. Just use that phrase, I propose the following experiment. You see, as soon as you've done that, you've surrounded yourself with career protection, right? Your experiment can crash and burn. It was an experiment. You are not a failure in that mode. You're an experimenter, right? And by the way, this works all the way up to the CEO level. It works best, I think, when you're pitching your boss, but it works at the CEO level as well, as I'll illustrate in a moment. When I was doing my research for my books, I stumbled across this guy, Dean Keith Simonton. And this guy's written like 20 books. This guy is an expert on creative geniuses. And one of the things Dean Keith Simonton said is, hey, these so-called creative geniuses, they don't necessarily have a higher success rate than the rest of us. They try more stuff. So you as an individual, you as a company, you want to be the kind of people that try more stuff. Not everything is going to succeed, but you could be like the creative geniuses when they are done at the end of the year or at the end of the day or at the end of their careers, they don't talk about the failures. You know, uh, Thomas Edison, considered the most prolific inventor in the history of the United States, we talk about he invented the light bulb and the chronograph and the tattoo pen, by the way, still in modern usage. Um, he had 10,000 experiments before he got to that first electric light bulb, right? No one talks about that. You don't have to talk about the failures. Just try a lot of stuff quickly and cheaply. Try a lot of stuff and then tell your friends, tell your boss about your successes, right? And so in the Experimenter Hall of Fame, there's this guy, Jim Dyson, founder of this company, uh, Dyson, best known for cyclonic vacuum cleaners and air purifiers and things like that. He had the heart of an experimenter. He knew that he was not failing randomly. He was failing forward. He was learning from each, each experiment. And this is an important part in your career and in your company. You've got to associate experimentation with learning. In fact, in many cases, we believe that experimenting is the only way that you can learn. When you come up with something new to the world, no one knows if people will want it. And so you have to find a way to put it in front of people, right? His experimentation was not failure. His experimentation was his journey to success. So if you want to make change, start with small experiments. And just to illustrate that this works at the CEO level as well, here's an example from one of my favorite CEOs ever. This is Jim Hackett, CEO of Steelcase, family-owned company for 100 years. Jim actually took the company public. The family still holding a majority share, but they wanted to fund their philanthropy, and so they wanted to cash out part of their ownership. Uh, there may be family-owned business in the room who have similar situations. I think the first non-family member CEO in the company. Anyhow, a, a great leader. And when he takes over as CEO a long time ago now, he had a big change he wanted to make. And your change won't necessarily be Jim's change, but it might still apply to your world. Steelcase is the biggest maker of office furniture in the world. And so he called his seven direct reports in one day, right after he became CEO, and he said, hey guys, I, I think it was all guys back then, it is not anymore, but this is a long time ago. He says, hey guys, he says, I've got something I wanna talk to you about. It was about changing their offices. And people are really defensive when you wanna change their offices in any way, right? And so Jim says to me, Tom, at that point, I had two options. Option number one is the big change option. He says, I could have told my direct reports, look, we're gonna blow up your old offices. You're gonna be in this office environment that we created. By the way, they weren't using their own designs. They were, you know, they used these open air offices, but they, the executives at Steelcase back then had these closed offices with acoustic privacy, not really using their own products, right? And he thought that was kind of weird. And so he said, option number one, big change blow up your office, you're gonna live in the open air like all of our customers do. And this is an important part of the process when you're doing your small experiments too. He says, and my promise to you, he says, my promise to you is that we will address these issues, right? That we will fix things that are bothering you. The Steelcase leadership team has been in that open air leadership community for the last 20 years, right? He got his big change and they did get rid of those old offices. 
He got his big change, but he did not push a big, scary change. He proposed a small experiment. So, of course, you have changes you want to make in your, in your team, in your company, maybe in your life. If, you, if it's possible to do this, some, some challenges have to be done in big gulps. But if it's possible to do this, break it down into the little experiment. And then people, people will join you. People will go along. So if you've got big change, find a way to break it down into small experiments.